human. Please welcome Donna Johnson. Over and above all of the physical manifestations from the brain injury, the psychological effects are probably the most surprising. No, shocking. This positivity, glass is always half full, filled with confidence, invincibility. That part that made me confident and strong were my abilities. They were gone. My lifelong mantra had been believe, persevere, conquer. It felt like a joke, a joke on me. I felt beyond marginalized. I wasn't even on the page. I've realized that one of those difficult aspects is, about the new me is her lack of identity. Who is this new me? And what can she contribute to the world? Something? Anything? Facing my new frailties and my newly acquired talents and attributes it was disheartening at best. Obstacles were everywhere, everywhere I turned for medical help, find a way to cope, find a way to accept this vastly different life. I spent 16 months in genuine physical agony, searching for help and hope. My symptoms were unrecognizable by medical professionals. And I was being told I just had to adjust, get used to my new self. The sooner I accepted it, the sooner, the better off I'd be. And since I was walking and talking, and I was, <laughs> it's true, I had bruises all over me. Um, that. You know, I was good, I was okay. And there wasn't anything they could do to help me. The unspoken words, just go away. Mm. Don't call, don't ask. I can't help you. I'm a doctor and I have sickness stigma. Mm. You make me feel uncomfortable, go away. But when do you give up? When do you stop trying to get back to normal, to the person you used to be? She is me, but I'm not she. Could I even trust the medical system with my care? Believe, persevere, conquer. That, that initial neurologist overdosed me without a backwards glance, without a care, seemingly without any regrets. No backwards glance. I was a guinea pig, a spiff. I just put dollars in his pockets, kickbacks. He hypothesized that all of my issues were simply the side effects of those seizure medicines, the new ones he kept giving me. And to trust him, as soon as my body adjusted to those meds, life would be grand again. I was being asked to complete paperwork I couldn't even read. I couldn't answer questions about my my health or my diagnosis, I had no clue. At one point, my daughter was on the phone with the disability insurance rep, and she asked her, 
How many more days do you think your mom needs to be out sick? And when my daughter said, they're talking weeks, they're talking months and years, and not days and weeks, I was shocked. I had been at all of those appointments. How come I didn't know that? Personal relationships evaporated. Except for those of y'all over there. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> and over there too. <laughs> uh, I couldn't go anywhere, do anything. I couldn't hold up my side of a friendship. I was burned by the searing words and criticism of my partner of six years. You've gone crazy. What is wrong with you? How much longer are you going to be laying around? When are you going to go back to work? You're no fun anymore. Penalized, demoralized, disharmonized, disenfranchised, unrecognized. What if I had, hadn't believed? What if I hadn't believed? that there could be help for me out there? What if I hadn't, despite everything, continued on believing and persevering? What if I had stopped at one neurologist or two? What if I hadn't pleaded with my PCP, screaming and crying in his office, I'm failing at every part of my life. I can't live this way. I'm in misery. What if I hadn't been able to just continue going on? What if I had stopped pursuing at one eye doctor or two eye doctors? We found nothing wrong with my sight. But the third one was a charm. What if I had given up at one or two or 15 prescriptions? Or what if I had given up when that prescription caused a rash that covered my whole body for close to a year? Well, I believed there was hope for me out there. I believed I had to persevere. And I wasn't going to let those motherfuckers conquer me. <laughs> but I needed something to cling to. I needed some hope. Not dope. Right? right? Give me guidance. Give me encouragement. Don't drug me to the point that I have no meaningful existence in my life. I won't be calling, of course, but that's no life. Please, give me hope. Becoming disabled is degrading. It's demoralizing. I'll never forget the day I uh, got the phone call from probably that same lady, the disability rep. Hello, Miss Donna. Congratulations. You, because you're never going to work again? You've been granted disability until you're 65. Like it is fucking lottery. Congratulations. <laughs> I know a lot of people struggle to get disability, and I don't want to minimize that. But I can tell you what, it didn't feel like a prize. I felt capsized. Eventually, I found my shiny luminary. I've told some stories about her because she's, she's just so awesome. Dr. Christina Maria Latawa, AKA Dr. Dr. Sun, Dr. La Sunshine, if you hear any of our earlier 
stories I found her and she took time with me she examined me and she listened to me and she gave me hope oh god I was so thankful she set me up on a recovery regime with vestibular concussion physical speech occupational and mental health treatment therapies guess what folks there was something that could be done to help me and i didn't have to just adjust to living in horrific pain and being unable to leave my home or live a normal life. I believed and I worked my ass off. And I've got some therapy heroes. That's Kara and Mary Beth and Kristen and Kim and Meredith and Kate and Dr. Beach and Carrie. They've had to work hard with me too. But I still, uh, I still can be overwhelmed and I can still be spinning. And I still have some trouble thinking straight and talking straight. Six months ago, I found Dr. Suzanne Kim, a low vision specialist, because even though my body was getting stronger and I was learning how to balance better, still couldn't see. My eyes are still spinning. And she took time with me and examined me and listened to me. And she had hope for me too. To be honest, I felt like I won the lottery that day. The day I met Dr. Latawa and the day I met Dr. Kim and also the day I met my therapist, Carrie Walker. So three months of freaking intense vision therapy. And most of the time, my eye doesn't spin off anymore. It's awesome. I have five sets of glasses. I can read, I can read a price tag again. I can change my life. I'm learning to ride in cars again. It's hard as shit. I feel like vomiting every time I get out of one. But I'm willing to go anywhere with anybody if you want to come pick me up. <laughs> Sight is more than vision, excuse me, vision is more than sight because vision is what takes in from your eyes and makes it work around in your brain. And that's the part that was really messed up. But we're fixing it, we're working on it. I'm gonna have to practice for the rest of my life to keep it that way. And it's hard and it makes me tired. Things aren't so simple. I don't process things that quickly. Uh, sometimes stuff doesn't get stored in memory. And then I panic and I stress. And sometimes if I push myself too hard, I'm down for days. But it always is some good reason for pushing myself. I've been marginalized, demoralized, disenfranchised unrecognized the step away from the medical issues and my anger at that mistreatment I think about what I've lost I've lost the ability to work at gainful employment oh, that hurts I had to move sell possessions sell my car I can't drive I can't easily read to my grandson. I can't really spin. 
I was pretty proud of the one I did at the beginning. I can't dance and I can't enjoy a noisy, crowded venue, concert. I'm gonna work towards those things and I do have my earplugs, so if I get invited, I'll go. <laughs> I've lost relationships. Just about everything important in my life except for my family and my friends and my dogs. So what's left for me now to believe in, to pursue? What do I want? What can I do now? How can I find meaning and purpose in my life? Well, I don't know if you noticed when you came in, but there were some flyers for a new peer support group, Neurotransformers. I've worked really hard to launch it, and I'd love your support. Like it's on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> or please come to a meeting. So when it takes off, notice I didn't say if, I hope to build a sense of community and to be able to help others avoid some of those obstacles and to know that they're not alone. Someday I'd like to meet my soulmate. Or maybe I should say she someday wants to meet her soulmate because <laughs> she has different wants and needs than the old Donna did. I'd like to start living and not focusing every day on my recovery. I'm ready. I am ready. Yes, I have a lot further to go, but it doesn't have to be five days a week anymore. I'm ready to have fun. I want to be understood, accepted, valued. I'd like to be respected. Long ago, I fantasized that some day I'd be introduced as the esteemed Donna of something, right? <laughs> I never thought it would be standing up here talking about social stigma and being marginalized. But you know what? There's one part of my message that would have been there one way or another, and that is I will not be defeated. No. I will not. I will not. So today, three years after my TBI, I'm recovering, I'm transforming. I'm unwilling to accept defeat or that I'm any less of a person than the person next to me, even though I might think a little bit slower, process a little bit slower go to bed a lot earlier. <laughs> I'm believing in myself. I found hope and I found answers. I want to help other people find that same hope and that strength. So to sum it up, she's marginalized, stigmatized. <laughs> She's tranquilized and traumatized and compromised and chemicalized and characterized and tokenized and penalized. They patronized, hypothesized, categorized and rationalized, fractionalized, dehumanized, compartmentalized and jeopardized, trivialized and villainized and neutralized. She's been capsized, terrorized, disenfranchised, pulperized, pedestrianized, slenderized, <laughs> demoralized. She was vaporized and agonized. She went unrecognized until she recontextualized. <laughs> and luckily, somehow, she escaped being euthanized. I am she, and 
she is me.